Hey, what's going on? It's Dan here, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about a topic that, honestly, a lot of beginners struggle with, and that is, when should I stop a failing Shopify store? And how do I even know it's failing, right? Let's say that you've started a store, and you started like with the one product dropshipping method, so the branded dropshipping method that I've been talking about on my channel lately, which is, in my opinion, and in my experience, the only good way to actually build a long-term uh, store. You have one product, you've ran some ads, and something's just not working. You're not getting any sales, or your sales are not profitable and you have no idea what to do. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about potential fixes that you can actually try and fixes that I've used myself. And this is kind of a framework that I've established personally where if I start a new store, and I don't start stores all the time, I usually you know, start a brand every once in a while when I'm already bored of the stores that I'm already doing because you don't wanna be doing too many things at once. But I've developed a framework over the years of actually doing e-commerce where I can go in and I see exactly, okay, like if this is not working, this is what I'm gonna do. And if this is not working, this is what I'm gonna do. And so I'm gonna talk about that in this video and I think you'll come out of it with a lot better of an idea of if you should abandon your store or if you should, you know, some other things to try to actually rescue your store and get sales. One of the feelings that I hate the most with entrepreneurship is, let's say that you started your first store and you know you just don't know if that's the right product, if that's the product that's gonna make you successful, right? Because we all want the same thing. We all want freedom, we all want financial freedom, we want personal freedom, we want uh, the freedom to actually be able to live life on our own terms. And so you know when you're just starting out and you, let's say, have a store, you don't know if that store is the one that's gonna be the golden ticket, the store that's actually gonna be successful and what's actually going to be your main online business, right? So I kind of got comfortable with that feeling over the years because I've been doing this for a while now. And it's something that you kind of will get comfortable with as well. But I totally understand where you, where you are. I hate that feeling. And part of Shopify, part of entrepreneurship is just testing, right? You have to test, test, test. And you really have to put an in effort into this. It's not just like a get rich quick. It's not like a you know, gimmicky thing. You're building a long-term real business. And so to do that, just like in any business, you really have to put an effort into it because you know if it was that easy, everybody would succeed. One of my favorite quotes is, success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. So, you know, if you can just go from failure to failure, right? You started a store and let's say after this video, you realized, yep, I should throw that in the garbage. I should just abandon this idea and start brand new, start fresh. Well, that's fine. As long as every single failure actually increases your enthusiasm to succeed. So the simple answer to the question, when or if you should stop your failing store, is if you've tested everything that you can possibly test, you've tried every single strategy that your top competitors are using, and you still haven't made any profit or any sales. And I would say, if you spent about $500 to maximum $1,000, and you still have no sales or no profit, then you definitely should stop, and you should go back to the drawing board here. If you've set up your store, you've got your product up and running, you have some ads, you've recorded some ads, you really put an effort into this, and and you still don't have any sales or profit, then look at this, right? Don't reinvent the wheel, never reinvent the wheel. If you wanna find something that works and you wanna just improve on that, right? And that is how I've succeeded, that is how I've reached six figures, seven figures, and how I will reach eight figures. But you know, the higher you go, the more you really have to innovate and improve. But if you're just getting started with like your first online business, you really don't have to worry about innovation that much. Just, you know, there are millions of people out there that are successful at online business. And you know, there are people out there that aren't selling anything crazy, they don't have any kind of crazy sales funnels, they don't have any crazy stores, right? They're just simple stores, they've got strong brands behind them, and they're making six figures per year, seven figures per year in passive income on Shopify with dropshipping. And so, you know, they as well have not reinvented the wheel. So my point is that you need to find a product that is already working and that's already making sales for a store if you want to maximize your chances of success. Too many times I see a lot of beginners trying to basically, you know, innovate too much and they find some kind of product and maybe emotionally deep down inside they think, Think, yeah, this thing can definitely get sales, but they don't have any proof, right? The only thing that matters is if the market wants to purchase your product, and if they don't, well then, you know, it doesn't matter what your emotions are, it doesn't matter what your dreams are, unfortunately, right? That's just the truth. So focus on finding a product that is already making sales, that is already successful for someone or for many competitors out there, and just try to either, you know, basically emulate it first, and then as soon as you're, you're actually successful, then you can go and uh, apply your own strategies, then you can actually improve on it. So before I really go into like my framework and how I determine what I should do on a failing store, how I should rescue it, if I should abandon it. I want to show you the exact step-by-step -step process that I do before I test a new store and also how I test a new store with Facebook ads. And I think that if you actually follow this, uh, that will bring you to a point where at that point, if you're still failing, then you're going to be able to accurately assess whether you should continue or not. So um, this is what I do. So first, 
always. I write down detailed strategy that my top competitors are using on their websites. So let's say if I'm selling a laser hair removal tool, then I'm gonna go on my top three or four competitors' websites and I can see obviously, you know, based on the ads that they're running, if they're making money or not, based on their traffic rank on Alexa, uh, which is a free Chrome extension. It shows you their traffic rank in the world, right? If they have a high traffic rank, it means they're getting a lot of visitors, which probably means they're getting a lot of sales. So I just go literally with like a notebook and I write down the strategy that they're using, where they're putting, uh, you know, what they're putting on their sales page, where they're putting their at the cart, uh, at the cart buttons, what, what uh, colors they are, how they're getting emails, things like that. And after I wrote down the strategies of my top competitors, then I actually go and on the other side of the page, I write down which strategies I'm gonna go and include. And so it's pretty obvious which strategies are like really, really mandatory, the ones that you should actually put in. And I make sure that I don't just copy, but I really like try to improve on it at least slightly on the strategies, right? So either by, you know, just making the sales page better, making the store look better, making the brand look better. And I also uh, make sure that my website is polished. The sales page looks good in my opinion, right? Cause I'm the only person that can evaluate, right? If you're just launching a store, you're the only judge until you actually start getting customers. And I also make sure that I have elements of scarcity, exclusivity, and the perceived value of the product matches the price that I wanna uh, sell it at. So let's say if, you know, uh, for scarcity, for example, I make sure there's some kind of scarcity, but it's not like, you know, a stretch of the imagination. It's not something that's unbelievable. So for example, I'll put in something like, we're running out of stock very, very soon. Make sure to grab yours today, or we're gonna be out of stock for a month. For exclusivity, I make sure that everything looks like it's trademarked. Everything looks like, you know, this product you can only buy on this store. And for perceived value, I make sure that, okay, if the product looks like it can barely be sold above $20 and I'm trying to ask $50 for it, well, that's just not gonna work. There's not even a point in moving to actually running Facebook ads, right? You have to make sure that your website, your sales page, all this stuff is good, polished, and it has these things before you actually move to um, running ads. And I also make sure that I actually have a strong brand. Uh, you know, obviously when you're launching, nobody knows who you are, but at least you don't wanna look like just a cheap Chinese website. I make sure that I have a minimum of five reviews from Luke. So Luke's is a review app and it actually allows you to pre-write your own reviews. So, you know, you can just use Excel, you can pre-write your own reviews. It actually shows you how if you download Luke's. And um, yeah, just make sure that I have some reviews on the product page. Uh, you know, you can have like four or five stars and then one four star at least to make it more believable. And then most important again is the product must already be successful and making profit and there must be enough room for spending money on ads. So if we're selling a product that we're sourcing between five and $15, so that's how much we're buying it from China for, we're selling it for $50, that leaves us about 35 to $45 uh, in money that we can play with for Facebook ads. If we're selling something at $20, but we're sourcing it for 10, that only leaves us $10 for ads and even less because of transaction fees. So we're already setting ourselves up for failure from the very beginning. So these are things that you have to look at. Now, if we talk about a minimum testing process for a new store uh, for Facebook ads, since Facebook ads are the best way to actually you know take a brand new store and uh, get it to start making sales as soon as possible what I do is I set a total budget for testing ads after the website is all polished and done as we just discussed it's the same thing as on Amazon if you sell on Amazon and you know before you actually start running PPC you want to make sure that your listing is optimized right and you know for those of you that do Amazon it's the same so you want to make sure that everything looks great before you actually start bringing traffic and bringing customers to your page so I set a beginning ad budget so let's say I say okay I have $500 uh, to spend on Facebook ads for this store. And you have to really you know, make this clear. So either 300, 400, 500, however much you have, maybe even 200 if you're on our low budget, 1,000. Let's say for a $500 ad budget, what I do is I create three video ads with a different ad angle in each ad, which I'll discuss in a second. And then I also make sure there's four different scroll stoppers. So there's actually kind of a, a format that I learned from uh, one of my mentors and that I tested myself and it works amazing. Uh, you don't wanna just test, you know, you don't wanna just make one video ad, let's say with your iPhone, uh, you know, you just record basically a model, she's holding your product, she's solving the problem and boom, that's it, right? Uh, you don't wanna just have one ad, you wanna have three different video ads and in each of the ads, you wanna have a different scroll stopper. What a scroll stopper is, it's the first few seconds of your ad where you know someone is scrolling through Facebook and when they see your ad uh, let's say in your ad it goes whoa check out this uh, you know brand new whatever it is let's say right uh, you know hair uh, laser removal device right you just want to kind of figure out a way to attract attention at the beginning of your ad because obviously people on Facebook have a very short attention span and if something doesn't look interesting they won't hesitate to keep scrolling so four different scroll stoppers and then uh, three video ads so basically that would create 12 different video ads and in each of the video ads with the different scroll stoppers, right? So there's one ad and then four different scroll stoppers for the one ad. That ad has to have a different ad angle than the other one and the other one. So you have three total ads, 
four different scroll stoppers total 12. So right here, I've got some ads pulled up for an online Shopify store. It's called Troubadour Goods. And it's basically like a luxury uh, handbag store, I guess, for traveling. So here, I'm gonna show you the differences between ad angles, like what an ad angle looks like. So here you go. Boom, so he's talking about, I guess he's just talking about the bag, he's presenting it, and he's talking about how it has Italian leather handles and uh, a 15 inch laptop pocket. That's one ad, ad angle right there. So talking about the features of the product, right? That's one right there. Another one, right? So there's a guy walking, so that the bag is actually being used in action, right? How you can you know, uh, take it to work, you can take it on the weekend, right? Traveling, so that's another ad angle, and that's the difference. And then let's try to find a third one here. So a third one here is basically, you know, Actually, it's the, just the same, that's the same ad angle, but just using a different scroll stopper right there, as you can see, what I was talking about. And um, yeah, I actually can only see, I guess this one is another one. This might be a different scroll stopper as well. Yeah, this is another ad angle, right? There you go. So that's the difference. So once I have those ads ready, and by the way, for the ads, you just literally use your iPhone or you can go and hire someone on Fiverr to do that. But if you're gonna do that, I recommend at least recording some elements of your ad first, and then you can send it over to a freelancer on Fiverr or Upwork to uh, you know, just make it look better for Facebook. If you wanna do that, that's fine. Um, but at this point, you wanna start your ads always with a PPE campaign, because now you have 12 different videos to test, and you don't know which one of them is going to be the best for actually getting purchases. So that's why we started a PPE campaign, which basically means um, pay per engagement or post per engagement. And uh, it's on Facebook, it's an engagement objective when you start a campaign. And you wanna aim at USA, UK, Australia, and Canada with English. So there's a, a setting for a language, you can set it to English. And then you only wanna put one interest per ad set, or instead of the interest, you can just try age targeting. So like 18 to 65, or maybe something more specific if your product is aimed at, let's say seniors or young people, right? So just either one interest, or just age targeting and then aimed at countries English, that's it. And then uh, try out three to five ad sets, $10 a day with the 12 different video ads in each ad set and run them for a few days. And then you can use the results from this campaign to find which ads are performing the best based on engagement and visits to your website. This method is gonna save you a ton of money uh, instead of you know testing your different video ads on purchase campaigns, which are basically campaigns, uh, they're conversion campaigns on Facebook. So you're telling Facebook, hey, get me sales with these ads. And obviously Facebook knows that you know if they're gonna get you sales, then they can charge you more for the ads. So you don't wanna be testing video ads there. You already want to go in that with an ad that's ready that you know works well. And we uh, basically see that based on the engagement. So likes on the ad that we tested in the PPE, visits to the website, so they're called uh, view contents or you know content views on your website, uh, likes, shares, things like that. You gotta get an idea uh, you know, of which ad performs the best. And then after we know which ad performs the best, we switch it over to purchase campaigns. So now we're talking about conversion objective. So basically we take those top two or three ads, and I like to take the top two or three, not just one, and then top two or three. And then once I select those top two or three ads, from the engagement campaigns. Then I select 25 cold interests for our purchase campaigns. And here is where interests are important because they're gonna get us our initial uh, sales. And how I like to do this if we're only on a $500 budget, I like to start with five ad sets at $10 per day with one interest in each, just one interest, one ad set, and that gives us uh, $50 a day. And then uh, that allows us to really, you know, test five uh, different interests properly, right? Because if you try doing it under $10 a day at the ad set level, it's just not enough money for Facebook to really get you sales. And so now we're testing five interests, but we still have 20 more interests to test because we selected 25, right? We don't know, like if we, if we select 25, that there's a good enough chance that, you know, there's a few of them that are gonna be profitable right off the bat. So five ad sets, $10 a day, that's $50 a day. Now we also wanna run a CBO campaign, which stands for Campaign Budget Optimization. And we wanna put 10 ad sets in that CBO. Uh, and we wanna set the campaign level at $50 per day. So what that does is basically you're telling Facebook, hey, here's a campaign, 10 ad sets, 10 interests, one per ad set, and 50 bucks a day for the whole campaign. And this way we can use Facebook CBO to basically test uh, a lot of interests for a much lower cost because CBOs work really well in my experience, uh, testing at much lower budgets per day. And so then we can run it for three days, $300 spent if we run these two different campaigns simultaneously. And what you wanna do is, this is so important, I really didn't do this at the beginning, Kill your bad ad sets fast. So after every day of money spent, right, you wanna just kill your bad ad sets. And what a bad ad set is, for that, you need to know what your break-even ROAS is. So that's your break-even return on ad spend. Very important. A lot of dropshippers have no idea what this metric is. You really don't have any grasp on your Facebook ads. You have no idea what's profitable, what's not, if you don't know this term. So how you get that is your selling price divided by your selling price minus your sourcing price. So let's say my selling price is $100, right? So $100 divided by $100 minus the sourcing price. So if our sourcing price for the $100 item, let's say it's $25, what we do first is 100 minus 25 that's 75 and then our selling price is 100 so 100 divided by 75 
and that gives us 1.33. So now we know that anything below or at 1.33 is uh, below our break-even ROAS. So anything above that, like 1.5, uh, 2.0 is amazing. Also, Facebook doesn't really track all of your sales accurately. So that's why uh, if you have a campaign or ad sets that are at 1.33 ROAS, that probably means that, you know, I would add on like 0.10 or 0.20 to that because Facebook doesn't track all your ad sets, like I said, accurately. So I would just kill all the ad sets that are below this number in that case. And then once I've ran those purchase campaigns for at least a day, I launch retargeting campaigns. And so what retargeting is, is basically, uh, you know, let's say we started the, the to run those ads that we already tested, they're good uh, based on the engagement. Now we're getting a lot of eyeballs on our ads, but not all of them are taking action, not all of them are buying. So what we wanna do is we wanna retarget those people with the same exact ad, but just a different text at the top. And so this should get you sales and this should almost always be profitable, especially you know for these audiences here. So if you go and create the following custom audiences, initiate checkout last seven days, add to cart last seven days, add payment info last seven days. So it means you know somebody who's added payment info but didn't actually buy on your website. Obviously they're so close to buying uh, that you know just show them one more ad and they'll buy. And then view content last seven days, that one can be unprofitable because that's just retargeting people who have been on your website. Uh, but you just wanna run all of these. And then as well, top 5% and top 25% visitors by time spent also works great. 95% viewed, uh, viewed video looks great because you know somebody who's viewed 95% of your ad, right? they're you know much closer to buying than somebody who doesn't know about you. So now you wanna launch these retargeting campaigns, same ad, but different text. And also what works well is using a coupon. So you can put like the best laser hair removal uh, device on the planet. Uh, use save 10 to save 10% off your order now, right? So that would be a good retargeting ad. It doesn't have to be complicated. You're just reminding them that, hey, you know about the product, here's some additional incentive to go and buy from you. And this should get you sales if your website is optimized and working well. And again, your product is good. So let's talk about the most common causes of failure with Shopify. And honestly, if you're failing right now, your store is failing, it probably like 99% of the time comes down to these uh, four things. So number one, bad ads, okay? Look at your ads and honestly, look at your ads well. You wanna judge them, right? Right? So imagine you're the customer and you're on Facebook and you see the ad. Would you honestly go click on your website and buy? Just be honest with yourself, right? You can't expect to succeed with really bad level ads. If there's competition out there. You have to be above the competition if you want to succeed. So if your ads don't grab attention and they're not high enough quality, you just can't win. So, uh, you know, make sure that your ads are actually good. Now, bad product. Again, make sure to uh, pick a product that is actually working and profitable for other people. And then also having no social proof on your website. So let's say no reviews on your website. Like I said, you can put uh, Luke's review so you can just pre-write the reviews uh, or nothing on your Facebook page. Make sure that your Facebook page ha actually has like videos, has some likes at least and nothing on your Instagram. You want to make sure your Instagram has at least nine photos with engagement. And I know it's kind of hard to like grow a brand new Instagram, but you can always look into buying an existing account, changing the name, you know, and just deleting all the pictures, putting new pictures, right? That's always a, an available option. Uh, there's always, you know, ways to get around things. You just have to think outside the box if you want to really, really win. And also another common cause of failure is not knowing your metrics. So if you don't know what your break-even row as or break even cost per purchase is, which I'll talk about in a second here, then you're just setting yourself up for failure. You don't know if the money that you're spending is actually bringing you a return. So to calculate your break even CPP, which stands for cost per purchase, it's the cost that you're paying in ads per one purchase on your website of your product. Um, let's say our selling price is $50. Let's say that our sourcing cost, including shipping, is $10, right? So from China via e-packet to the customer, it's $10. And then our transaction fees, typically they're about 3%. Uh, so 1.5, uh, $1.50 for the transaction fees. So 50 minus 10 minus 1.5 is 38.50. That's our break even cost per purchase. So if you go on Facebook and you see, okay, I spent $38.50, I got one sale, that means that I made $0 in profit, but I also lost nothing, right? So that's your break even cost per purchase, you're breaking even. And it's very easy to calculate your break even ROAS from that, like we already calculated it, you just take $50, uh, which is the selling price, divided by your break even cost per purchase, and then that gives us a 1.298, uh, in this case, 1.3 rounded up. Most wasted ad spend can be avoided by just knowing the above numbers. I know this sounds like a lot of information, but honestly, it's not that complicated if you really understand this like a system, right? It's inputs and outputs. It's not like just chance. It's not just luck. It's not like gambling. It's not the lottery. You're not playing like, uh, you know, uh, slots at the casino, right? This is very straightforward. And, you know, you can really avoid a lot of a lot of money wasting if you just kill the bad ad sets, if you kind of go in and understand what's not working and why. And I'm gonna show you how to really see what's exactly not working and how to fix it so you know which part of your funnel or your website isn't working, right? Because your website is a funnel. That's all it is, right? So you 
wanna set up clear limits for your ads from the beginning. So these are what I recommend. After spending three to five times your break-even cost per purchase across all of your campaigns, let's say you've spent, let's say our uh, break-even cost per purchase was about $38 and we've spent uh, five times that. So 38.50, we're gonna do that right now, times five, that's 192.50, so $200 we spent and you should have one sale. If you don't have one sale, then there's a problem. Also, if you spent two times your break-even cost per purchase on an ad set with no sales, kill the ad set. So in that case, 38.50 times two, if you spend $77 on your ad set, kill it. Like that's not profitable, you spent way too much money. And if you're spending over your break-even row to get a sale, if, even if you're getting sales, kill the ad set, you're wasting money. Uh, the golden rule is pause anything that's not profitable and eating away at your budget, don't let it keep running. And you also wanna check your ads every single day at the same time, so once every 24 hours, unless you're testing high budgets. If you're testing higher budgets, like you know, 50, $100 a day, you need to check that three times a day because the budgets with Facebook, they can really like uh, go sky high very quickly. And another very helpful thing as well is let the data talk to you, let the data tell you what to do, right? With Facebook ads, you can basically, you know, you're paying for data, you can see exactly what's not working. And your entire funnel is only as good as its weakest link, so uh, you know, your store is a funnel, right? It's a sales funnel. You're basically turning people that don't know you into paying customers and then getting them to come back again and again and again. That's what a funnel is. So what you want to do is if your campaigns, if your ads aren't meeting the limits that we discussed in the earlier slide here, then pause them and look at the metrics. You can actually see like, you know, everything in your Facebook ads. So if nobody's clicking on your ads, so you have a very low click through rate. If you have a lot of impressions, but very little amounts of clicks, then you want to test a new ad with a different ad angle, different scroll stopper. Obviously your ad isn't captivating enough. It's not getting enough clicks, right? It's all common sense. If nobody's adding to cart, but you're getting a lot of new content on your website, make your product page better, right? Obviously it's telling you that your page is not the greatest. So, you know, cause nobody's actually clicking the add to cart button. They're seeing your product page, but they're not clicking. So make that better. Nobody initiating checkout. Well then make your add to cart page better because initiate checkout and add to cart is different on Shopify. Uh, you can actually get them to go directly to initiate checkout, but I like to keep them separate. Uh, so yeah, just make your add to cart page better. Add some scarcity. That's also a good way. And let's say if people are initiating checkout, but they're not purchasing, which means they're so close to purchasing, but they're just not doing it, then add last minute scarcity, work on your initiate checkout page, you know, give them something, give them an offer they can't refuse. It sounds like the godfather, but yeah, give them an offer they can't refuse and you'll be good, right? So just let the data tell you what to do. It's all there. And usually either your site or your ads are bad and need improvement. And if your store is breaking even right now, so you're getting sales, but you're just not making any profit, I have good news for you. You're probably gonna be able to make profit within the next few days once you actually apply these things. So if your ads are breaking even at the break even, cost per purchase and ROAS, uh, first of all, you're probably making a little bit of profit because Facebook doesn't track every sale. But the first thing you wanna do is create highly targeted lookalike audiences and then run those ads, the ones that you're running. So uh, right now you've already, since you already have sales, you can build lookalikes, which are basically the audiences that Facebook says, hey, if these people have already bought from your store, we're gonna create audiences and we're gonna target people who are similar to those people based on their page likes, uh, you know, countries, behaviors, age, ages, genders, things like that. So uh, what I always test is 1%, one to 2% and two to 5% for USA, UK, Canada, and Australia. So the big four, those are where most of your sales will come from. Also some good audiences for lookalikes are top 25% visitors by time spent, top 5% visitors by time spent. And then of course, these are gold always. Initiate checkout last seven days, add to cart last seven days, add payment info last seven days. You can also try last 14 days and last 30 days, right? So the name of the game is testing. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you exactly what's gonna work for you. But once you try these things, you'll see which ones are sticking, which ones are not. And you always wanna make sure you're running retargeting campaigns with these audiences that I just talked about as well. So initiate checkout, add to cart, and add payment info. And the best thing that you can do is if your store is breaking even, you can focus on building out your back end. A lot of people only focus on the front end of the Shopify store, which is basically getting people off Facebook to come and buy your products. But the problem with that is that it's very, very hard to keep you know spending money and keep acquiring new customers. It's always better to build out a stronger back end, which a lot of people like completely forget about and by back end I mean you know what happens after the sale or in the background so stronger email sequences to strong follow-up you know if someone goes abandons cart you can hit them with an email saying hey here's 10% off coupon you know you can buy right now it's valid for two hours um, and then you can also have SMS follow-up so use SMS bump which is an amazing app that allows
allows you to basically automatically send an SMS to their phone number because they put a phone number on the, uh, your website if they're checking out. And then also Facebook Messenger with the Recart app. And so same thing, basically it's an automated chat sequence on Facebook that goes and hits them and reminds them. In this world, we're overloaded with information all the time. And so, you know, you're directly competing with many other stores for their clicks, for their, you know, attention. So you want to keep reminding them, keep getting their attention and you'll get the sale. And now finally, if you feel like you've tried literally everything, then just abandon ship and try a new product in store. Okay. There are millions of opportunities out there. We're living in the best time right now to start an online business ever. It's never been easier, right? You, like 10 years ago, you used to have to go to the bank to set up like a merchant account to process payments. Now we have Stripe, PayPal, like just this is, these are just some of the reasons why it's so easy right now to become successful with online business. And every failure brings you one step closer to success. And all you need to do is to win once, that's it. So if you fail 10 times, but succeed on the 11th time, that's all you need in your set. And once I heard that, you know, when I was experiencing failure early on in my entrepreneurship journey, I, I knew like, okay, if I just, you know, keep going, keep going and I make these dumb mistakes, but I win once, that's all I need. And I'm probably gonna be set for life. So my point is never give up, never lose enthusiasm. Unfortunately, most people give up after one week and just don't be that person. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, ring the bell, and let me know in the comments below if this strategy helped you out with your store. Let me know what your plan is to either abandon your store and try out a whole new product, new store, or whether you're gonna try to actually uh, rescue your existing store. Hope you enjoyed, I'll see you soon.